issues. One part of his work, which a number of people, um, I think again, because it's simpler, seem to think is um, a, important is the historical account of the growth of uh, or the movement of civilizations and societies, sword, plow and book in particular, which is, um, I mean, I think it's a very interesting book. I was there when he was writing it and we discussed it a good deal. And it's interesting because of that feature of his, which is that he simplifies and clarifies and brings things into an order. But it's grossly, obviously grossly over simplified. I mean, you know, lumping. I mean, as he said, he loves tripartite or quartet kinds of stages. And uh, the moment you look at it, the history is not divided into these stages. I mean, we may teach it in first year undergraduate courses in anthropology that you have hunters and gatherers, you have peasants, you have moderns or whatever it is. And it's the 18th century stage progressive theory of um, Ferguson and Adam Smith and others. But, you know, the, to lump all agrarian societies under one heading and all uh, hunters and gatherers and so on. And also, he's not really a historian. I mean, this is one of the, there's a paper by Andre Gingrich on uh, uh, Gellner as historian and anthropologist. And I get the sense that Gingrich is neither, doesn't really understand what history is or what anthropology is. I mean, he probably does anthropology because he's a professor of anthropology, but um, Ernest doesn't think like a historian. I mean, you may ask, <laughs> what, do, what does that mean? <laughs> Basically, um, you're interested in the complexity of, of different uh, causes which lead into something that happening. Um, so at times he gives very interesting sort of um, menus uh, in order to have a scientific revolution or industrial revolution, you need A, B, C, D, E, F. And that makes you think the real test of a, a, a great historian is to change a menu into a recipe. Because when you read, as I seldom do, a cookery book, you find that they say, you know, take two ounces of um, good communications, five ounces of literacy, uh, three ounces of uh, political integration, six ounces of low taxation. And then there is the recipe. First, add your literacy. Then, and not only just the things, but the quantities and the densities of them and the timing of them. And someone like Max Weber is better at this because explaining a great change like the Industrial Revolution or the Scientific Revolution is like explaining how um, a combination lock works. You, you've got you know, 20 important factors and if just one of them is not there missing or is at the wrong setting, it won't unlock. So you need the things happening at the right pace, the right density, and at any time, and this is the other thing that historians realize, the fragility of all this, there's nothing predestined about it. And if something is missing, Cleopatra's nose had been another shape, Napoleon had been a tall man rather than a small man, whatever, the rest would have been different. Hmm. So it's accidental, coincidental, um, the joining together of forces. And I think that sort of training in uh, history he hadn't really had and, and didn't understand. So he was still thinking quite a lot cross-sectionally um, rather than in depth. But it's very, it's very important and interesting.